Hello, everyone. My name is Bailey Grady. I live in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and I am your facilitator for the evening. I have been a member of Silk and Sonder since March of 2020, and I'm so excited to be here with all of you for our February monthly setup. I saw that there are some February babies in the chat. I'm a fellow February baby here, so happy early birthday to all of us. If you're new to this community, welcome. In addition to these beautiful journals each month, you've also gained an extended community full of some of the most genuine and supportive people around. And if you're a longtime Sonderer like me, welcome back. You already know how special these journals are and all of the magic hidden within our community. Tonight, we're going to be putting that pen to paper and getting these February journals ready for the month ahead. So before we get started, make sure you have your February edition. If it hasn't come yet, that is totally fine. Just grab any notebook or a few pieces of paper to take notes on, and then you can transfer your thoughts when the journal arrives. Um, I know that with the weather and stuff recently, we had mail that was delayed by like a whole week over here. Um, so maybe it's just running a little bit behind. Um, and then of course, make sure you have your favorite pens, markers, stickers, colored pencils, um, whatever it is that you like to get set up with. Um, and a handy beverage or snack, and just get ready some car to carve out some me time. So you will be connecting with each other in the chat this evening. Um, if you're new, if this is your first social, you'll notice that there's no camera to worry about if it's on or off. Um, I'll be the only person on camera, um, and you don't have to worry about if you're muted or unmuted. All of that's all locked down. So the way that you do have to communicate with your fellow Saunderers here is through the chat. But in order to do that, you're going to want to make sure that you turn that little blue box there um, above where you type. Um, make sure it says everyone. A lot of the times it will default to host and panelist. Um, and if it's set to host and panelist, then not everybody will be able to see what you have to say. And I love seeing all the incredible ideas you have and different ways we connect with each other. So definitely make sure that you have that setting flipped if you would like to share. Um, and we would also love to see how you spend your social this evening. So feel free to take photos during or after the event tonight of your setup for February. And you can post those in our app, Sonder Club, or tag us on Instagram or TikTok at Silk and Sonder or hashtag Sonder Social. And speaking of taking photos, you are more than welcome to take pictures of the screen or grab screenshots as we go through of anything that you see tonight. So without further ado, before we get started, we're gonna go over our community guidelines here. So number one is be kind and courteous to yourself and others. Um, no promotions or spam, please. And please respect everyone's privacy. No hate speech or bullying, of course. And try to limit repetitive product and accessory questions. We definitely like to try to stay focused on the topic at hand. Um, Sonder Club is a great place to ask some of those things like, what's your favorite pins? We don't mind a little bit of that here in the chat here and there as we're getting set up, but we also want to make sure that we're discussing what we're looking at together. Um, and then we, myself and Jennifer O, the fabulous Jennifer O, will be helping out in the chat tonight. Um, we will answer any and all questions that we can, but there are some inquiries that have to go over to the HQ team. Um, for example, we don't have access to um, your accounts, your plans, your subscriptions, um, shipping, anything like that. So if we direct you over to hello at silkandsonder.com, that's just for that team to be able to help out. Um, they are Monday through Friday, so just give them a day or so to get back to you, especially if it's the weekend. And finally, Sonder Socials are a tool to help elevate your emotional health through the power of community, um, but you are responsible for your own emotions, well-being, and decisions. And so what that is there to say is a lot of the times as we're reflecting on things, as we're doing activities, we can get into what I like to call some really like crunchy emotions and things like, you know, I don't like to think that any emotions are bad, but sometimes we're not ready to dive all the way in deep and feel something fully right here, right now in this moment. So if that's you, if you come across something tonight that makes you feel a little crunchy, that's okay. Step away from it. Give your permission to take a break. Give yourself permission to come back to it later. Um, if you don't like the music, turn turn the volume down. If something about me bothers you, turn me down. You can just focus on what's on the screen. If you want to hang out in the chat and talk, do that. If you don't, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, just participate at your own comfort, whatever that means for you. So here's a look at our agenda for the evening. For each of these sections, I'll be giving some guidance around ways you might complete your pages, and then we'll be putting on some music so you can take time to tackle them. 
We'll be completing an opening activity together around our new theme of confidence, completing our January reflections, setting our February intentions, setting up our mood and habit trackers, and again, of course, learning tips and tricks from each other while sharing in the chat. So speaking of our new theme, our theme this month is confidence. Every month when that new journal arrives, I'm ready to unveil a new theme, and I always turn to page two to read Mayha's opening letter for the month, and this month is really no different. So if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend taking a few minutes to do so after our social, but I wanted to go ahead and call out two of my favorite parts, which read, so what inspires confidence? For me, it's all about finding internal validation rather than seeking it from external sources. It's about knowing your worth and owning your strengths, even when others may not see them. It's about embracing your flaws and realizing that they make you who you are. And it's about taking risk, even when they feel scary, because that's where true growth and confidence comes from. So I think one of the most important things Meha does here is she asks that question of what inspires confidence and then answers with what it means to her. And I would encourage each of us to reflect on that and what confidence means to each one of us. And on page three of our journals this month, we have the definition of confidence, which is the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something, a firm trust. And we also have a line where we can write exactly what confidence means for us. So a lot of things Mayha says in her letter resonate with me, and I also find clarity in our definition here. And so after some reflection, I've decided that for me, confidence is really about radical and consistent self-love. If I truly love myself exactly as I am, if I value my thoughts and opinions, if I believe without a doubt that I am strong and capable, if I expand my horizons because growth is important for me, myself, and I, I mean, really, who could ever shake my confidence, right? But getting to that place of radical and consistent self-love is hard. And unfortunately, there are often obstacles outside of our control that try to derail that process that we make. So going back to Meha's letter, she says, if you're struggling with confidence this month, I encourage you to reflect on what makes you unique and embrace it. Think about a time when you felt truly confident and use that memory to fuel you. Most importantly, remember that confidence is a journey and not a destination. It's okay to have setbacks, moments of doubt, but as long as you keep moving forward and believing in yourself, confidence will sprout. Some days I struggle to love myself exactly as I am because what I see reflected as good and valued by others doesn't match what I see or feel about myself. And sometimes I have interactions with people who make me feel like my thoughts aren't valuable and I start to doubt my capability. Sometimes I have moments where I tell myself I can't do new things because I'm already struggling to juggle my day-to-day -day goals and responsibilities. But Meha is right. Confidence is a journey. And every time I remind myself that I am worthy exactly as I am, or that I find a solution to a problem that shows me how valuable my perspective is, every time I try something new, even if it doesn't go 100% planned, even if it is something I decide I never want to do again. Each and every day that I remind myself, it's okay to rest, it's okay to slow down, your productivity does not equal your value. Every time I meet that negative narrative with that radical and consistent self-love, my little sprout of confidence grows and grows. So as we move through this next month ahead, I invite you to think about what confidence means to you. Find the ways it shows up in your life, and the places where it needs a little love to grow. I'll be right there with you figuring it all out. And I can't wait to see the things we learn together along the way. And in the spirit of welcoming in confidence, it's time for our very first activity. So for this activity, it's not going to be a page in your journal pre-printed, which means that you can flip to a blank page. You can use a scratch pad. Um, if you have the thoughts journal, you can use that or just any other notebook. Um, you can really use any blank space available to you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna think of some things that come to mind when you think of the word confidence. Don't second guess yourself, just think about it and write it down and try to come up with at least 11 words or phrases that describe confidence. Now see how you can work it into a poem where the first letter of each line is a letter from the word confidence. You can do sentences, one word, 
sets of words for each line, et cetera. And I'll show you an example of what I mean here. So I know this does to start by writing out things. And if that works for you to have like a word bank or phrases to kind of pull from, go for it. Um, but what we're going to end up doing is actually creating hopefully a poem that starts where you have the word confidence there. So the way I started mine was I just wrote out the word confidence. And then I tried to kind of think about words and phrases that reminded me of it, but also thinking about those letters as I went along. And we have some really great examples. So these are just some examples that headquarters pulled from us online. So for example, we have charming appearance, right? So there's the C, optimistic sense for the O, never tiring, faith in self-being, intelligent brain, determined to gain, ever ready, never untidy, caring manners, energetic and adverse. So there's all that sort of like, phrases, not one single words, right? The person over on the right takes it a little bit further. Um, and if you can do this, that's amazing. Um, they actually like get into rhyming and creating like full limericks and stuff. But I want to show you what I do with mine. So this middle one's the first one I did. And so I did kind of write out like phrases or sentences and they just kind of, I just kind of went with it. Honestly, I think with this, you know, you have to just give it a try. It's going to feel a little bit weird at first, um, which is why I have the little cartoon there on the top that says, I want to be good at something, then be bad at it first, right? Um, so don't be afraid to just put something out on paper. I feel like every time that we do these acrostic type poems, everybody's always surprised at how they kind of turn out. Um, and then over on the left, I just did single words. And then over on the right, I actually did words that just contained the letter. So if that's easier for you to just do a word that contains the letter rather than starting out with it, that's fine as well. So the one in the middle that I ended up with was consistent radical love, right? That's my, what confidence means to me. Open stores within my heart, nurturing a little spark, fearsome, whimsical, intelligent, and kind, delivering new peace of mind, embracing all I am, new, old, and current versions, centered by me, myself, and I, embarking through a beautiful life. So any of these, all of these, none of these, my hope is that you'll at least give it a shot. And if you feel comfortable sharing in the chat with us how yours turns out, we would love to see it. So I'll put on a little music for you while you work on your acrostic, and then we'll move into our monthly setup.
Okay, if you're still working on your confidence acrostic, that is totally fine. There may be some moments as we go through tonight where you find yourself with a little extra time. Maybe you wrap up one section a little quick and you can always hop back to it. And as always, you know, our time together here tonight will end at some point, but your time with your journal doesn't have to stop. You can spend as much time on it as you want. You can work through it, work on it throughout the month. Um, I saw lots of people who decided to start with the word, a couple of people who decided to go with that strategy of writing down like phrases and sentences that reminded them of confidence and turning that into a poem, all kinds of really creative, just like really beautiful y'all, like just really I don't know, it, it makes me feel like really connected to our community because so much of what you all are sharing and writing is just so incredibly beautiful and it all like resonates with all of us, I think. So thank you for sharing. And if you feel comfortable, we'd love for you to share it in Sonder Club as well. I wanted to call out one thing I saw from the chat that was really special, I thought, which was um, Lara said that she was finding you know, kind of focusing on one or two areas when trying to think about this. And she realized that it was time to lose the stereotypes and embrace their own version of what confident mean, confidence means and that that realization was pretty cool. And I agree. I do think it's really cool. I think with confidence and even with last month's theme of ambition, sometimes those words can get a little pigeonholed, but we get to make our own roles. We're all adults and we can decide exactly what confidence means for us. So thank you all for being so vulnerable and sharing with us tonight. Uh, we are now going to move into our monthly setup, the main event, and we're going to start with our January reflections on page eight of our journals. So reflecting on our wins, our challenges, favorite moments, and things we want to start, stop, and continue. As January comes to a close, we have this lovely ritual of starting fresh with this new edition and reflecting on what the last month has taught or brought us. And each theme is really a chance to engage with a new part of ourselves and be open to the new growth that this exploration may bring. So one quick reminder before we start engaging with our journals, this journal is yours. It's yours alone. It's not for anyone else. Um, neither myself or Jennifer are going to show up at your door to come grade your journal. There's no journal police. There's no right or wrong. Um, so feel free to write as free as you'd like. Be honest and interpret things however they speak to you. Um, there's no right or wrong way. Like I said, there's just your way and that's what matters. So use this space to be authentically you, no matter how messy or structured that may be, and use it as a place for you to say goodbye to January and move into February. So for this page, page eight, um, I tend to take my journal pretty literally focusing in on actual events, goals, and stumbles, but with that theme last month of ambition, you might like to focus your reflection specifically through that lens. And if you're having a hard time remembering last month, I know I did this month, especially, um, be sure to think about looking back through your pictures on your phone or calendar appointments. I know that really helped to jog my memory this month. Um, and once you filled out this section in the chat, share with us what came up for you, what you wrote. Um, I know when I went back through my pictures and stuff, I couldn't believe how many things that I had already forgot that had happened this month. So I really love that we have this space to kind of reflect on that month before we move into the next one. Um, so when thinking about wins, you're going to think about something you did, something that made you smile, made you happy, an accomplishment, challenges, something that maybe didn't go right, that was out of your control, stumbling block, frustration. Um, and then you've got your start, stop, and continue tips there. And that's my page up on the screen. So you're more than welcome to look at it, but I want to give you plenty of time for your own reflection. So I'm going to put on some nice music for you, and then we'll move into our next section.
Thank you for taking a few moments to reflect back on January. I really appreciate everybody that felt comfortable sharing in the chat. Um, I wanted to share, um, Sherry shared with us that their January win was completing their very first month of Silk and Sonder and what a difference it's already made. And we just love hearing that. Um, so we're so glad you're here with us, Sherry, and all of you, we're so glad you're here. Um, I also saw, I wanted to share that Sarah said um, one of some of her wins were new patterns for work, um, which like new patterns and routines are hard. So good job, Sarah. And they're also working on working positively in a good situation as compared to the last situation. I know a lot of the times that negative workplace environment, like almost PTSD in a way can kind of like follow us over place to place. So I've definitely been there and I feel you on that. Um, and then Alice shared that a challenge was having to admit that they didn't want to do tutoring even anymore, even though they really loved the little girl they were working with. Um, and there was a lot of emotions wrapped up in that. And Alice, I just want to say that I'm proud of you. I know how hard that had to be. Like sometimes we have to put a pin in, th in doing things that, you know, we know that we're good at and we know we're helping other people because it's just not right for us. And it's so hard, especially when you care about the things that you're doing. Um, and I just want to say I'm proud of you for doing what's right for you in that moment. So thank you all so much for sharing. Um, we are now going to segue into our February intentions on page nine of our journal. So starting fresh, thinking about how we want to grow or what our goals this upcoming month might be. And our intentions are broken down into the following categories. But y'all, if one of these categories doesn't fit you, just change it. Just feel free to change it. It's your journal. Do whatever you want, right? Um, but pre-printed, what we have is spiritual health, personal life, physical health, key relationships, money management, and professional goals. And as the top of this page says, setting intentions is not making a to-do list. It's asking something of yourself and then giving yourself the strength to do it. It's important to let go of the pressure of perfection and just use the ideas that work for you. So with this in mind, we wanted to share some examples for inspiration of how you might use this page for yourself. You can use that theme of confidence as you set your intentions this month if you want. Um, you can focus on one area like self-love or self-talk. Um, you can use the name of songs or song lyrics um, or quotes or anything like that that bring you inspiration. You can write what you want to accomplish in each category or something you want to do more of, something you want to do less of. You can just try using stickers or pictures or doodles in each section. Um, and likewise, you can also write down things you want to let go of in this area. So in the past, I have loved using different ideas in this area and getting creative, like picking a theme for pictures or using quotes and leaning into the theme of the journal for the month for inspiration or using song lyrics or even just a single word. So here's some more examples, um, and I especially liked the one on the right where they decided to start each area with I intend statements, um, and I also liked the way that the person did the more and less there on the left. So my word of the year for 2024 is embrace. So I've decided to use that to fuel my intentions this month. So in spiritual health, I'm embrace, I want to embrace mindfulness. For personal life, I want to embrace patience. Um, for physical health, I want to embrace movement. For key relationships, I want to embrace quality time. Um, in money management, I want to embrace simplicity. And then in professional goals, I want to embrace trust. So I'm going to cycle through all of these slides and examples as you work on your own pages and your own intentions for the month. And when you're done setting up your intentions, if you feel comfortable sharing in the chat, how you decided to set this up, or if you went with a particular theme or what your goals are, you know that we would love to see them. So I'll put on a little bit of music for you and then we'll move on into our next section.
Welcome back again. I always love seeing what all of you share in the chat. Um, I saw that Jen shared um, they set a professional intention to celebrate the gra their graduation of their bachelor's degree. And I just love that. I feel like a lot of the times we are so focused on intentions being like this goal. And this was a great reminder that celebration can be an intention, something fun, something for you can be an intention. So I love that. And then I also saw that Melissa shared that they were feeling like a theme of trust, trusting their connection with themselves, trust process of applying for jobs. So I thought that that was a great theme. Um, and I saw a couple people saying like, oh, I think I want to change some of these, but I'm not sure what I want to change them to yet. That's okay. If you haven't 100% landed on something here yet, just skip it. It'll come to you later when you figure out what it is. Um, or maybe there's one area where you don't need an intention there this month, right? Like there's six little boxes there on the page, but maybe this month you really want to focus in and maybe you just need four intentions. That's okay. Do whatever feels right for you. Like most of us, I have a set of intentions every month and I don't always meet them. But the point of intentions isn't to conquer each one of those boxes or even four boxes. It's just to set the idea of what you think you want over the next 30 days and then notice how those desires evolve. So flexibility here is everything and it's part of what makes intentions so beautiful. So thank you all for sharing. With our intentions set, we're now going to be moving into our trackers for February. These are some of my favorite pages in the journal, especially when I was getting started with Silk and Sonder. Some months I only focused on these pages and the journal prompts, and I still got so much out of my journal each and every time. So tonight we're going to start out with our mood tracker, um, and this is going to be on page 10, so you can go ahead and pull it on over. So utilizing a mood tracker can allow us to understand trends and how we feel so we can take notice and begin making shifts. When combined with other trackers and journaling, our mood tracker can also help us notice habits or external forces that may be having a positive or a negative impact on our emotional health. And from there, we can make changes to focus on the things that hopefully bring more positive days. So for this evening, we are going to share this feelings wheel. This is a great resource on identifying which moods you may want to track. Um, looking at the wheel, we do have six main categories. There is fear, anger, sadness, surprise, joy, and love. So I'll bring this wheel back in a little bit, but let's first talk about how to set up your tracker traditionally. You can pick one emotion from each section of that feelings chart. You could focus on one or two areas of the feeling chart to really dive into one or two different emotion families. Or with our theme of confidence this month, you can select emotions that resonate to that theme for you. To fill in your mood tracker, you can fill in every emotion that came up that day, which is how I used my tracker in the beginning. Or you can just fill in um, whatever emotion was the strongest. You can use stickers, different colors, doodles, or just a single pin to create your key and track. But remember, this is all about what works for you. And our members use this page in a variety of ways. The canvas is yours to fill, so take these tips and tricks and run with them, or choose to do something completely different. For example, I started using my mood tracker to focus on anxiety levels about two years ago, and it was really beneficial for me to notice what was working, what wasn't, and celebrate how far I'd come, especially in conjunction with my habit tracker. The words I used to track when I tracked anxiety were none, low, scattered, moderate, high, and panic. Um, probably midway through the year last year, I noticed my anxiety started becoming less frequent and I was better able to identify moods and emotions that were pre previously kind of shrouded in varying levels of panic. <laughs> so I started trying some new things with this page. And the last few months, I used it as a place for like a one word or phrase each day for that day. So for example, my phrase for today might be Sonder Social. Um, it was a fun way to make like a quick reflection and look through all I had experienced at the end of the month. Um, tracking my one phrase a day has been super fun, but unfortunately I'm dealing with a lot of low energy again. So I'm going to be tracking that this month and my categories are none, low, okay, focused, productive, which may seem similar, but they feel different in my brain and body and hi. My hope is to try to combine this with other areas of the journal to see how things like 
weather and sleep and nutrition may be impacting these energy levels. I'll let you know how it goes. So here are some other ways you can repurpose or refocus your mood tracker. You could use it as a daily affirmation tracker. You could use it for anxiety levels like I used to, or depression levels or something different, some other health or mental health related thing. Um, you could use it for energy levels like I'm doing this month. On a scale of one to six of a certain feeling, angry, tired, joyous, etc. And then here are some other examples of how people have set up their trackers. So somebody used it as a relaxation tracker. Somebody did a Peloton workout tracker. Um, this person used it as like a mood tracker, but they created these cute little flowers to track. So it turned into like a garden. Um, and then this person on the far right also used it as a mood tracker. But instead of tracking specific emotions, they just tracked the emotion categories. And then they wrote inside of the tracker um, different like emotions that they felt resonated to them in those different categories. Now, this month, we have the hexagons. So for those that might be new, every other month, it changes from hexagons to this wheel. So if you like something that fits more of the wheel, don't worry, it'll be around next month for you to try. So I'm going to hop back over to this feelings wheel slide here for you all to get started. So use this as that starting point. And again, I'll cycle through all of these examples while you work on your pages. And once you set that up, as usual, if you feel comfortable sharing in the chat, we'd love to know how you're making this work for you. And then we'll get started on our final section.
Thank you all for sharing in the chat. I love that we get a little extra time during the monthly socials, so it doesn't feel quite as squished in as some of our other ones. So we've still got a good little chunk of time together, which means I have time to share some fun things that I saw in the chat. Um, so Lori shared that they were using their, they were going to try using theirs as a mood booster. Six go-tos to keep their mood positive and energy up, like yoga, listen to music, read, eat a healthy snack. They're loving blueberries right now. Text a friend and snugs with pups. So I thought that was a great idea. Um, Kimberly said that they're trying to track similar moods for six months so that they can look back at patterns, which is a great idea. Love that consistency. Rachel shared that they've been dealing with some health challenges. And I saw several of you agreed that you've also been dealing with some health related things. Um, and Rachel is using theirs as a symptom tracker so they can kind of see the progress that they're making. So that's a great idea. Um, and then Corey shared that they've been using their mood tracker to track monthly intentions. Each day at the end of the day, they decide which intention they had success with or focused on that day. So I thought that was also really cool. Thank you all so much for sharing. Like I mentioned before, these tracker pages were some of my favorites when I first started. So let's move to our next page, which is our habit tracker. Using the habit tracker can help us start new habits, Stop doing habits that don't serve us and continue habits that bring us value. So here are some tips and tricks to consider for your habit tracker. You can use the theme of confidence as you focus on making selections this month. You can kind of zero in on one area or theme like getting better sleep, staying grounded, being more calm, present, etc. Um, if you tracked habits last month that worked for you, you can choose to continue those same ones into this month. You can also find inspiration from those intentions that we set up earlier. And remember, you don't have to fill in every line of the wheel. You can just pick a few and leave the rest. Try to find balance between habits you know that'll probably be easier to do and ones that might be a little bit trickier. Here are a few ways people have set up their habit tracker. Um, I love how colorful that one over on the left-hand side is. Um, I know when I first started, I used a lot of like colors and different colored pins, and I love doing stuff like that. But I found that for me personally, that made it harder to track as, you know, life got busier and I was leaving my home more because I started with Silk and Thunder during COVID. And so I had to switch down to one pen, but I still love all of the beautiful colors and things when people are able to do that. I think it looks awesome. Um, and then you also have this person here over on the right. I like how they decided to kind of carve out the weekends. I do that in my tracker as well because um, my habits tend to take a little bit of a tumble <laughs> during the weekends. So it helps me to be able to see kind of at a glance what was going on if I was off work. Um, and you can also see the person that did all the color decided to do a design um, to track as they went and just colored it in versus the person over on the right is tracking like actual numbers or symbols and you can choose to do whatever works for you. And keep in mind when you're setting this page up, this is a habit tracker, not a habit to-do list, but a tracker. If you can check off every space, that's awesome. But it's also okay if you don't. Seeing what works and doesn't work for us or what we're struggling with can be just as insightful and important as actually doing the habit sometimes. So here you can see my January tracker and my February tracker. And when looking at January, you can see a lot of little dashes, which means I didn't do the habit that day. And I'm not surprised by that. This time of the year with the cold, wet weather and the lack of sunlight is real hard for me. And reflecting last month helped me make my selections of what to track this month. And you can see that some habits, like my tech Sabbath, I've even planned for specific days only. So I do best, like I said, when I can just take things simple and use just a little symbol to track each habit. So I'm continuing that this month. My habits for February are water, physical care, no eating out, tidy, sleep routine, medications, and my tech Sabbath, which for me is where once each week I will refrain from using social media for 24 hours. In addition to this monthly habit tracker, there are also smaller habit trackers in each weekly page section of the journal. So there's flexibility and room to grow throughout the month. There's also a mind body health plan in those same weekly pages and other things in those sections that you may wanna try to incorporate as part of your monthly habits. 
In the past, I've incorporated both of those things into the monthly section of my journal as a way to kind of switch things up a little while still feeling like I was building consistency. If you're not sure if something should be a monthly habit or a weekly habit, I usually recommend thinking of a monthly habit as something you want to track each day and a weekly habit is something you want to track just a few days or only focus on on that specific week. But my tech Sabbath habit is set up for once a week and it's still on my monthly wheel. And that's okay. It helps me to see it coming up in my overall habit wheel each day so I can be mindful of it as it approaches. And that's what works for me. So likewise, you can do what works for you and fill in every line of that wheel or just a few. For inspiration, here are some different habit tracker ideas for this month. Please share in the chat what you're tracking, how you're setting this up, and I will hop through these example slides again and throw on some music so you can get your wheel going. Thank you. 
Thanks for completing your habit tracker. It's always cool to see what people are tracking and notice that many of us are being curious about the same habits. It was super great seeing everyone's reflections, intentions, and tracker set up for February. I hope to see some updates from you in Sonder Club later this month as we embrace that theme of confidence further. And speaking of Sonder Club, um, which is our Silk and Sonder app, if you haven't been in there yet, or if it's been a while, if you're somebody like me that is a little bit more journal focused, you may have missed some of the cool things that are in there now, because there's a lot of things to check out. There are daily affirmations, a daily ritual prompt, and personalized journaling prompts on your homepage. In the library section, you're going to find many meditations and featured collections of daily rituals. In the club section, not only can you check in on the discussions in the community board, like Team Hexagon or Team Wheel, um, but you can also check out the how-to section, where you can find quick videos on diving into different parts of your journal and tons of examples and inspiration on different pages from all kinds of folks in the Sonder fam, just like you. And lastly, on that games tab, you're going to find fun bingos for the month. And we have a little bingo board in our journal this month. So that might be a good place for some inspiration. Um, and there's always some fun quizzes to take in there too. So believe it or not, this concludes our time together this evening. These events always seem to go by so fast, even with the extra 15 minutes. We would love to see your journals and examples in Sonder Club if you feel comfortable sharing. Um, we are still doing our Refer a Friend to Silk and Sonder program, which is where if you refer someone to Silk and Sonder, they get $10 off, you get $10 off, and then you can come to Sonder Socials together, right? <laughs> um, also, if you're currently not an annual subscriber and you're able to upgrade to annual, you may want to consider it. It does save you quite a bit of money throughout the year, so just something to consider. Um, and then if you would please take our feedback survey, you'll get a link for it in your email within 24 hours, but you can also take it right now using the links that Jennifer O is popping in the chat um, or by using that QR code there. I promise all of the feedback gets looked at and reviewed and considered and is part of how changes in the journal get made and changes to these events get made. So definitely fill that out for us. Um, and Jennifer is also gonna share the link to our YouTube in the chat. Um, you do want to save this link. Um, it's not always searchable, so make sure you have that saved. But this social and all of our socials are recorded, and they will be up on that YouTube um, within about two business days or so of the event. So if you ever miss one, if you can't make it to one, if you want to go back and replay one, you'll be able to do that through that link. Um, and then finally, so at the top is our playlist for tonight, and I'm sharing that link in the chat for you as well. Um, now, I make a playlist every month <laughs> for our events and different things that I do, um, which is super fun, but I would have like a gazillion playlist if I kept them forever. So eventually over time, they all get cycled into my like Sonder Social Master List. So you are more than welcome to find that playlist, follow it, pick it apart, make your own playlist with it. Um, but if it disappears, don't panic. <laughs> the songs will be in my master list, which you're also welcome to go check out too. Again, thank you all so much for joining us this evening. I had so much fun and I'm feeling super excited about the invitation to welcome and confidence together this month. I hope you feel the same way. And until next time, be good to each other. And Jennifer and I will see you all in Sonder Club.
consigning Voice of the future, speak to me kindly Ask for what I want, cause somehow it find me Somehow it find me Somehow it find me